Welcome back. Today we're looking into the Icon YC 751A. We have a transmit audio problem on SSB, um, which which is a bit weird because um, the radio works, but I'm constantly getting reports that the signal sounds a bit raspy, and uh, I can confirm there is a problem with the um, with the transmit. So. I turned the power completely down, I turned the mid gain completely down and if we listen to the receiver that's what we hear and we're actually on zero beat so this is 3785 and I know the radio is spot on and the receiver is spot on as well um, there's something isn't right here if we go for AM, let's say, we're absolutely zero beat here, and it's perfectly quiet. The the receiver is on full audio, and it's completely quiet. See, it's three seven eight five, and so we can hear we bang on. That's what we hear, and it's it's perfectly quiet. I'm running into a dummy load here at the moment and we just have a, a probe here on the cable so we get some receiving signal here let's go, where is FM? here well, this is FM it's audible on FM as well There's some something is there, but it's definitely worse than SSB. We can hear that. That's not normal. I think one of the problems is um, the PLL, which is a common thing with this radio. So let's do that again and just knock it a little bit. Doesn't make a difference because sometimes there are loose bits. So you may have some bad capacitors in the PLL. That's what it sounds like. Um, obviously, that's a longer task, so we just need to figure out what's going wrong. What's going wrong there? We'll find it somehow. All right, let's take the covers off and uh, get to some points here. I think what we start with is actually checking what comes out of the modulation amplifier here. Um, but I think the problem is somewhere in the PLL circuitry, which is common on these radios. They just die over time and this thing has a lot of hours. All right. So just for the sake of uh, continuity, we did the same in USB. Radio receivers and USB as well. And it's the same. So, same weird sound. It doesn't change. We're getting some audio noise here, but uh, it's still doing it. So it's something in the, I would say it's something in the RF section. We'll find it. So we're checking the 8 volt supply, which is here, and uh, we're reading about 8.2, which is fine. We've got the scope in AC. And if we send, there's a little bit of a glitch, but it doesn't really glitch, so uh, there's no ripple, no noise whatsoever on the, so the preamp is fine, which sort of makes sense, because all I get when I transmit and uh, increase the mic gain, uh, the noise gets higher, the noise level. So we know the preamp here, the, the preamp is down here. <clears throat> the first stage microphone preamp is down here um, it appears there is no noise coming out of that um, we can confirm that by feeding that into the stereo and, and see what comes out of it but uh, I think it's, a f it's fine so the problem is somewhere on the main board where the second and third 
stages. This is the preamp here, and uh, we just checked these 8 volts here, and that's fine. Uh, possibly worth fitting an extra capacitor here to make that a bit quieter, because I think the first stage is a bit noisy. Uh, but that's how it is. So the microphone comes in here, and that's the very first stage, and that goes out to the mid gain pot to this leg, I think. Yeah, to this leg, and this is actually the output which goes to the main board. I think it's, uh, it's P5, the most what's that left hand one? Yeah, if you look at the top, I think it's the most left hand one on, on P5. That's the modulation signal. So let's look at the other amplifier. So that's the second stage of the microphone amplifier circuitry. We come here from our mid gain pot, go into this two stage amplifier, into that op amp, and that's the tone control or the, the passband control network. And uh, here it goes to the modulator. So we need to figure out if, if there is any noise here um, and if. The signal is clean out here we may have an issue with the PLL which is very likely so I just want to rule out the um, audio side because when I crank up the mic gain on, on AM it's the same and uh, I can't hear it on FM but uh, yeah so we'll see what happens there so I will check the signals um, this area here is the uh, second stage of the modulation amplifier Everything looks okay so far, as far as I can see we need to check the frequency response but what we're gonna do now is just go through the alignment procedure and, and briefly go through it and just see where we're at. In the service manual you got everything you need, um, just go down just go down the list and, and, and check everything and uh, make sure that's all good. Particular to watch for is uh, the PLL alignment. If the voltages are out, you got a problem with the PLL trimmers, and uh, which is possible because the radio is about 30 years old. So we'll hook a bit of measurement gear up and uh, we'll come back. Well, it appeared that the manual is talking garbage here. So this reference frequency is actually the output of the calibrator pot, and that's measured on. Um, on the resistor R1 on the connector end. Uh, this one is the the reference frequency is measured on the diode on the left hand side, uh, which is next to that J1 connector. Because on R R1 there is only DC, so this is garbage. So that what we get here. I think that's close enough to 720. We're not going to get that any better. And again issue is that uh, this is a diode and on the left hand side of that diode there is the reference frequency and the calibrator voltage is, is here on that resistor uh, so I think the manual is just not correct in this case because there is no there's no RF on the other side so I don't know what it is so I didn't really touch it um, we leave that alone that's fine not bad for that age so we check the lock voltage, which is here, that's R202 on the metal can side, and the adjustment is that L, whatever the number is, that, that one. Um, it's got to be 3 volts at 8 megahertz, and uh, between 1.5 and, and 2, if you just flip over to 7.999 when you hear the relay clicking. Um, so that, that was all good. Uh, there was literally nothing to do. Um, we just, uh, you know, 0.001 or bolt or something like that. Off doesn't really matter. So that's all good. So we know the uh, VFO is in range, which is good. So now we're checking the BFO frequency, and uh, we are in USB 14 megahertz, and that's perfectly fine. And uh, you need to pry off that cover to get to the R309 uh, to measure that. 
All right, let's uh, let's try LSP. So that's LSP. It should be nine or one hundred. That's that's about what we get. I think we'll leave it there. So we're checking the idle current of the PA stage. You're gonna desolder that joint and uh, just put your meter in between and set that to 100 milliamps. It was fine. So. I did that already. The that's a driver, which needs a hundred milliamps, and you're gonna desolder that resistor. There is a joint here. Just desolder it, and it's gonna be set to 600 milliamps in idle. Make sure there's no mid gain, no power, no drive, nothing. Everything turned counterclockwise, and just turn the transmitter on, just to measure the idle current. That's what we're gonna do now as well. Um, just to make sure everything is fine on the radio itself from a adjustment point because I still believe we have the issue that there is some humming noise we'll find that um, again just to make sure we're not dealing with a misalignment or something like that or for the components we need to make sure everything is within limits and then we can track the fault So from what we can see the radio is in fairly okay condition but we're still having the hum so I believe it's the um, DC DC converter of the display unit because that's the only thing which makes that sort of noise and uh, we'll have a look into it and it lifts around around here that's the backside so that's the that's the bottom of the radio so this is the right hand side of the radio and the DC DC unit lives here it puts out minus 5 here and that's the voltage input and we can see a ripple on both signals and that's the that's 0.3 volts per division in AC and uh, that's before that choke here so I believe that capacitor here is a little that little blue capacitor here has most likely died and probably a few other ones around there as well so we'll take it out take a measurement and put a new one in and then we'll see what happens um, it's I think the input capacitor which lives somewhere behind there is bad as well because I can see about a 0.1 volt ripple on the input as well so that indicates that the uh, that the DC DC converter is rippling quite a bit all right let's change that this parts and uh, see how it goes so we've done quite a few of them here here and here uh, Still need to do a few more. There are a few few more down there because they all they all cooked. I don't know if this is visible, but uh, you can see it's almost popped out here. So if we test a new one, come on, 1.8 ohms ESR, and uh, we take and if we take the suspect one. There's 5.1 ohms. Um, that makes a big difference. Even the capacity is about the same. Uh, it's just a poor old cooked electrolytic. Well, we were just looking for a 3.3 microfarad 50 volts, and I found some 3.363 volts, which I thought, oh, let's test them, and. We have a very interesting result here. I've never seen something like that before. It says um, diode with a capacitor. Well, and it comes up with different results. Sometimes it's a anti parallel diode or something like that. So apparently, this thing has a lot of loss. So we hooked up one to the power supply. We are. We are doing about uh, 40 volts, that 
electrons um, that capacitor is weighted for, uh, for 63 volts so if we hook that thing up watch this this is uh, about 30 milliamps uh, that's not true uh, we are in 0.4 amps so this is um, this is about 100 milliamps of leakage current which is obviously not a good thing so I think I tested quite a few of this batch I think they're all garbage maybe too old who knows I don't know where they come from uh, it says um, it says Philips on it that's weird 3.3 micro produced in 2003 so we need an alternative I'm gonna go through a few of them if they're all the same but I think they are because I tested quite a few and they're all reading some weird figures here still says uh, 3.6 volts diode with a parallel of 5.28 microfarads what does this tell us sometimes new components are faulty as well so we were lucky we found one on could salvage one from another board it says 2.4 ohms ESR let's check the old one if it's better we use that one and the old one says 4.4 ohms and quite a little bit of loss so let's go for the new one or for the new old one and uh, should be okay I'm gonna throw the other ones away I have tried to reform a few of them just by applying some voltage for some time but it's not gonna work they they are actually dead I'm gonna go through them and just throw them away because uh, you don't have faulty components in your storage here. You can dismantle the whole front panel but I didn't. Um, sometimes you need to take components out to get access to other ones uh, and just put them back together. Uh, there is another yellow one behind there that's gonna come out as well. There are a few more ones. There's another one down here which, which looks really weird. It's just hard to get them out because there is no room and to get the display unit out you're going to dismantle the whole front panel which I don't really want to do actually. Alright, let's fiddle that.